Today we're going to talk about eye astigmatisms and some different optics that can help accommodate that. I do want to point out that having an eye astigmatism has nothing to do with how good you can actually see. I have better than 20-20 vision. I don't wear glasses or contacts, but I still have an eye astigmatism. It's something that you're born with and it never goes away. So if you have it, don't feel bad about it. It's not something that you necessarily have to correct, but it is something to be aware of. And there are some manufacturers and specific models of optics that I tend to use and that I tend to avoid. So bear with me, because I did not go to med school, but basically the cornea is the lens of your eyeball. So your eyeball is round and in front of it, you have a spherical shaped lens. And if that is not perfectly round, if it's slightly misshapen, in any way, then you'll likely have some sort of an eye astigmatism. So a quick and easy way to tell if you have an eye astigmatism, you could just ask your eye doctor, but if you wanna find out right now, I'll show you how. Take any sort of red dot optic. I know this is a holographic site. It's an EOTech, not a red dot, but just pretend here for a second and then take a camera like your phone turn on the camera app, hold it up as if your lens was your eyeball at eye level, and whatever you see on your phone's camera is going to be what that dot is actually supposed to look like. So if you're seeing something completely different than your actual eyeball is seeing, then you have some sort of an eye astigmatism. Now again, I'm not gonna get super crazy into the medical or light theory side of these things, but basically the reason a red dot will not work is a red dot works with a red LED light it is shining forward towards a parabolic lens and then that light is reflecting back at your eye and it's something to do with how that lens is shaped and how the lens in your eye the cornea is shaped that your eye is just not perceiving that light the way that it's supposed to now everybody's going to see something a little bit different regardless of how large of an moa dot it's supposed to be i only see about a one moa dot with a bunch of lines coming out like a star or something like that some people will see what's like a bundle of grapes they'll see a whole bunch of red dots stacked on top of each other some people see the same thing except it'll be small like one moa dot scattered all over the place some people will kind of see the dot but it'll look like someone took their thumb and like smudged a big smear across it and the crazy thing is that some red dots might actually work okay for you while others might be completely unusable and while i've never actually purchased one the hollow sun he 510 see I'm able to see perfect I was really surprised when I saw that this is actually considered to be a red dot so some brands might work okay for you and even within a same brand if you're looking at aim point you might not be able to see a t2 but you'll be able to use an acro or vice versa the eyeball is just a really crazy complicated thing and so are optics so the only way to really tell for sure is find somewhere that has a good return policy or just go to your local gun shop. Hopefully they have a good selection and just ask to see a number of different red dots. There are prescription glasses and contact lenses that can help fix an astigmatism. So that is an option. But if you are worried in an emergency situation, let's say you run out of contact lenses and you just don't have any and all of your guns have red dots and now you can't see any of them. It's really important to have something that in a worst case scenario, you can still make it work. So I'm going to talk about some things that I personally tried, what I like, what I use, and how these different technologies work. So first we're gonna talk about prism optics. And here we have a Trijicon ACOG, which is possibly the most famously known prism optic. Steiner also made a really nice prism optic, but I think it's been since discontinued. They made them in three, four, and five X, depending on what you want. There's the Vortex Spitfire, Primary Arms SLX, and then there's the Gideon Advocate. Prism technology has been around for over hundred years and things like binoculars, and it's really insane how it works. Most scopes and different optic technology uses reflectors or lenses to flip light and reflect light, but the prism is actually using triangles and they don't need reflectors or anything. Depending on the materials that they use, it perfectly will reflect evenly the amount of light and it'll basically bounce back and forth and do whatever it needs to do to make this reticle work. The reticle is physically etched into the glass. The only prism optic that I've extensively tested is the Trijicon ACOG. I've had this version on this 5.56 SCAR, uh, an FN15, and I also ran this on a Steyr AUG. 
I've had the 308 version, which is three and a half magnification, whereas this is four magnification on a SCAR 17. And I've also used one of the smaller, I believe is one and a half magnification. People know them as the mini ACOG on an MP5. And those are also very popular on things like AKs. One thing to consider about all prism optics is the higher the magnification, the physically larger and heavier that optic's going to be, and also the worse the eye relief is going to be. Just going from this 4X ACOG to the 3.5X ACOG that I had on my SCAR 17, the eye relief was immensely better. You have to be really, really careful with this and make sure that it's not going to punch you in the eye. It's a really great reason to wear safety glasses when you're shooting them. And on the ACOG, the eye relief is not adjustable. But when you get down to some of the one half and one X prism optics that are out there, the eye relief is a lot more forgiving and you're really not adding that big of an optic to your weapon. There are definitely some pros and cons to the prism optic. I am a really big fan of it. You do have to keep in mind that you're dealing with a fixed magnification. A prism design simply doesn't allow for any adjustable zoom. So you can use the bend and aiming technique. So even though there is 4X zoom on this, you can do both eyes open and use this for CQB. You have to think about what you want, what you're going to use the gun for, and ultimately decide if this is the right choice for you or not. Now, another option is going to be a holographic sight. The only manufacturer that I believe is around for holographic sights is EOTech. They developed the first holographic sight in the 90s, and from there, they were able to make it smaller and smaller. If you look up the very first EOTech design, it is physically massive. Now, the way a holographic sight works is there is a laser diode, and it bounces off some reflectors and shows a holographic image. I've used a number of different EOTechs, and I'm quite a big fan of them. This specifically is an EXPS 3 and it has their new DCR Danger Close reticle in it, which I'm a big fan of. I also have one of their standard reticles, which is the circle with the dot in the center. And I find that reticle to be very fast and I do like it, but I personally am not very precise with that reticle. I had that on my SP5 when I did an MP5 operator course and it was great when we were doing moving stuff. I was able to switch targets really quickly and I was able to use the bottom of that reticle to make shots at 100 yards. It was very effective, but when we were actually shooting at paper, I was taking a look at my groups during drills it was really not impressive compared to some of the other guys in the class that had different setup. Now the EXPS3 does have a button for night vision. So if that's something that's important to you, this is definitely the model that you want. You'll want an EXPS2 or 3 if you plan on using a magnifier with it because the illumination controls are going to be on the side as opposed to the standard being on the rear, which would be blocked by your magnifier. The nice thing about using a magnifier with these is it doesn't change the size of that one MOA dot in the center, but it will change the rest of the reticle. Now, another nice thing about the EOTech is from a value point of view that you are getting a mount with the optic. You can actually take these off if you want to put on a riser and different things like that. There's definitely an aftermarket for that, but it's nice that you don't have to worry like a scope leveling everything out and torquing everything to spec that this is just ready to go out of the box. You can throw it on your rifle. Now, the only con I would really say is that a holographic sight is still physically a little bit large and the battery life is really not exceptional. It does depend on how much you use it. If you remember to turn it off when you're done using it, and what reticle option you get. If I remember correctly, the Army uses these with their night vision, and before any operation, they just swap out the battery just to be safe, then they don't have to worry about it. One thing as a civilian that I like to do is this does not have a light mounted on it yet, but when it does, it's going to be a model that takes a CR-123 battery. So hypothetically, if this battery were to die on me, I could steal the battery out of my light, and obviously, I wouldn't have a light then, but I would at least have an optic or this is a quick release on the EXPS3. So if you wanted to, you could just pull this off and have standard iron sights on your top Picatinny rail. Last type of optic we're going to talk about today is going to be one that everyone knows, and that is your standard zoom optic. Your options range from vortex to night force. Really, the sky is the limit here. You're going to have either a etched reticle on the glass or you're going to have a full LED reticle. For illumination, your options are going to be either that full illuminated LED reticle 
or there's going to be a wire with an LED on it where only the center illuminates. Now the loophole that I have here on this Tika 22 is just a standard etched reticle and it doesn't have any illumination. I have a loophole Mark III HD which I had on FN15 and that one has just a LED center dot and then the rest of the reticle is etched and on my hunting rifle I have a Trijicon Crado which I am a massive fan of as an S reticle that also illuminates the entire reticle illuminates so depending on what kind of brightness you're shooting in or hunting in you can adjust the illumination on that reticle and it is really nice you do have a ton of flexibility here though if you want something like a 1 to 4, 1 to 8, 5 to 25, 4 to 16, depending if you want something for CQB or something for very long ranges, things that a red dot typically does not do, you have a ton of flexibility here. And again, the sky is the limit. If you want something very budget oriented, a Vortex Diamondback, or if you want something like a Schmidt and Bender, you can spend a ton of money on a really, really nice zoom optic. And typically the more money you spend, the more advanced and nice of a reticle you're going to get, the more advanced features you're going to get, the better build quality and all of those things. But the weakness of course is going to be the size and the weight of a lot of these optics, as well as having to mount these. I would personally recommend just taking it to a gun shop that you regularly go to because they'll probably mount it very cheap or they might just go ahead and mount it completely free for you, especially if you bought the scope from them. When I found out I had an eye astigmatism, I was pretty bummed. I bought a Trijicon MRO to put on my SP5 and I was like, crap, I'm not even gonna be able to use this. What am I going to do? But once you realize what all your options are, it's really not that bad. I ended up putting a Neotech on my SP5 and while it is physically larger than a red dot, it makes it a little bit tight around slapping the charging handle and things like that. But like I said, I ran an MP5 operator course with that setup and I didn't really have any issues. I tried a couple different techniques and the instructors made some suggestions for those of us that were running optics and that helped a lot. It's definitely something that you can train around. You're adding a little bit more weight when you're using any of these options compared to a red dot, but in a lot of ways, you're also increasing your capability. So don't let it be a limitation for you. If you have astigmatism and there are optics that you like to use, please leave a comment below. Hopefully it helps someone out. And if you really are stuck and you don't know what to do, leave a question in the comments. At the end of the day, I want everyone to be an operator and be able to pick up almost anything and run with it, whether it's your gun or someone else's. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you next time.